Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks at Washington University. This is the summer 2025 session of this class. If you are from the university, you'll find everything on both Kaltura and Canvas. If you are tuning into this from the internet, I do put everything on GitHub and YouTube. So you'll find the links to all of that in the description of this video. So if we go here to my GitHub repository, you'll see that I have a number of repos here. We're dealing with the application of deep learning. I also teach a generative AI class. So this is how I like to think of the AI world. You've got AI, which is everything. This is basically just making machines act like humans, essentially. Machine learning is when you learn from data. And there's a lot of applications of that. Deep learning is specifically neural networks. And then generative AI exists pretty well completely within the realm of deep learning. There's, there's some aspects of it, certainly, that are not. And then you've also got predictive AI. This is what I think of your classic data science where you're trying to predict things. Computer vision I put into this as well. You're giving it input and it's predicting some sort of a, an output versus generative AI where it's things like text to text, where you give it text, it gives you text back. Or image to image, where you give it an image, it applies some filtering to it, maybe it takes black and white to color, something like that, or text to image. You describe something that you wanted to create and it creates it for you. So these two really are the, the world of, the, of, of my two classes. We are dealing with predictive AI. You can find links to the other course as well if you're interested in it, and it will be offered in the fall. So all of this is on GitHub and on YouTube. So let's pop into applications of deep learning. There'll be a link to this. You'll see that we are basically in the readme file here, and it gives you all the important links and everything. I do need to update that to the summer, but all the dates in here are officially the summer dates. The summer class is ran quite a bit faster than your typical semester class. So you'll see that these modules in the fall, it would be one module per week. But here you can see we have module one the first week, and then we have uh, th these two modules together. And you'll have a lot of times where you have two modules together. So we're going at double speed quite a few of the weeks. Now the class, the assignments for this class, you will have 10 programming assignments. And they're all in this assignments directory. If you're checking this out from the internet, you can certainly look at these. You won't be able to submit them for grade. I'll show you, students of WashU, how to submit these when we meet for class the first time. In summer, this is a completely online class. So we will meet, we'll meet via Zoom. There's also a icebreaker at the beginning. This is just for you to post in Canvas in the Warshoe system and get to know each other because we're going to get into something that is a Kaggle competition. The Kaggle competition is basically a, um, a, a it's, it's Kaggle and I'm gonna create a data set for all of you to compete against each other. And we'll see according to the leaderboard where everybody lands on this. You will be able to do this in teams, just like in real Kaggle competitions. And then there's a final project. I'm still figuring out exactly, I'm gonna upgrade this. This used to be a paper, but I mean, come on. In the world of ChatGPT, does anybody, does any professor really assign papers? Because let's be real, if you, if I assign you a paper, you're gonna have ChatGPT write it, and let's be real, I'm gonna have ChatGPT grade it. So what is the point in that? You'll have my chatbot talk to your chatbot. This will probably be something on vibe coding. I need to kind of put that together uh, still, but that'll be ready by the time that we get to it. So these are all of the assignments. This is how you will be assessed in the course. So let's jump right into the first module. So we're looking at all of these in GitHub. GitHub's great and all, but you're gonna probably want to edit them, make changes, and it just looks better if you open it up actually in Colab. And now you're actually running Python code in here. So, I mean, you could say print hello world, whatever you want to say, comma, two plus two, and you can run this and it will actually spin up a virtual machine and run it for you. They don't give you really, really super advanced 
machines for free. You can see that I do have a subscription version, but you should be just fine with Colab Free. You can also run all of this code on your local computer. I'm going to recommend that unless you like really setting up a lot of, especially if you're going to try to get the GPU to work, I would suggest running it through Colab. There's virtually nothing in this course that is going to require you to have a GPU. Though having a GPU will certainly cause things to run faster. So you can see there the big, the big four of deep learning who really kind of brought AI back out of one of its winters and into the forefront. So they launched deep learning. And then before we even had another sort of AI winter, we had generative AI. So I mean, this, these are amazing times truly for artificial intelligence. Jan Lecourne is French Canadian who did a lot of the computer vision. We'll definitely be dealing with some of his uh, contributions. Convolution Neural Networks, Jeffrey Hinton, obviously the created backpropagation, godfather of neural networks, Yashua Bengio, another, I mean, a lot of these are Canadian and created uh, many of the, the algorithms, particularly some of the generative adversarial neural networks that in many ways gave rise to some of what we see with generative AI. Andrew Nang, who I have taken so many of his courses, amazing amazing instructor. The first three of these individuals did win the Turing Prize. Unfortunately, you can't have four people win the Turing Prize. The Turing Prize is sort of like the Nobel Prize of computer science because computer scientists can't really win the Nobel Prize. Aha, uh -huh. but that, then came Jeffrey Henton, who, who, who showed that com computer scientists, um, people outside of physics can win the physics. Uh, Nobel Prize. So Jeffrey Hinton has won the Turing and the Nobel Prize. I don't know that anybody has won both of those. Be a great question for ChatGPT. So what we're doing in this course, traditional software development, is where you put input data into the computer and you wrote program code and it produced an output for you. Now with machine learning program, you put input data into the computer you give it the output and it trains on it and it gives you a model, which is basically your program code. So you're teaching an artificial neural network to be able to produce output according to that input data. And the thing is, when you have new input data that you've never seen the output for, it's going to make a prediction. So you can program it on, say, the stock market up to a certain date. And you're giving it the input, you're giving it the output, how well the, the, the stocks actually performed. And then it gives you a model that in theory will, will predict future movements in the stock market. Now I'm still working for a living, so obviously I haven't figured that one out yet. These are the types of applications of machine learning, particularly for neural networks. You have computer vision. This is really the bread and butter of PyTorch and the neural networks that we're dealing with. Tabular data, okay, maybe that's, that's data that fits into Excel. You've got nice rows and columns and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you'd be better off with a gradient boosted machine than a neural network. Natural language processing, this is another one that neural networks have just dominated. I don't think, especially with generative AI, I don't think you hardly use traditional natural language processing anymore. You, do, you use it when you want highly deterministic results, perhaps. Reinforcement learning, this is used a lot by self-driving cars. Some of the amazing things that we've learned about chess and beating Go players has been there. Time series, that's the kind of the stock market pr prediction. Time series, interestingly, is, is connected very closely with natural language processing because natural language processing is really kind of like time series. You've got letters occurring over time. And generative AI, oh my gosh, just literally four years ago, when I would teach this class, I would be like, yeah, and we've got this weird thing, generative AI, you can create human faces with it. And, and oh my gosh, it had, I would have never guessed that I would create an entire class on generative AI. It has, it has taken the world by storm. 
I mean, those of you that have been doing this since, I don't know, since at least five years, did you, did you see generative AI coming? I mean, it came like a Mack truck. So we have regression classification. Regression is where the neural network is taking in numbers and predicting another number, like some risk score, or like you might give it cars and it tries to predict the miles per gallon for a car, how efficient the car is. Another data set that you will see is the iris data set where you, you, you give it some measures of a particular type of flower, and then it's going to attempt to predict it's going to predict the class, classification. It's going to classify it as one of three iris species. Those are very simple examples, but that's where we'll start at least a little bit. Why deep learning? There are a lot of other machine learning constructs, support vector machines, random forest, and gradient boosting are among the top ones that I've dealt with. That is really, it's, if you're doing tabular data, yeah, use one of these three. But if you're using highly unstructured data and most of the interesting data in the world is unstructured, you'll probably want to use deep learning. Why Python? Python has taken the world by storm, propelled a lot by AI. It's, it's a easily approachable language. I do expect that you've done some programming before this class, particularly Python. There, there have been people who have picked this up as they go. You'll hear me refer to vibe coding. Vibe coding is where you have ChatGPT, help you a lot on this and that is that is perfectly acceptable to use generative ai in this class is absolutely not cheating you can use it for anything that you want to in this class i'm not going to tell you that something is cheating when as soon as you work in the industry they're going to tell you use use generative ai because you need to know this stuff to survive in the in the career field. Uh, believe me, this is this is coming fast. You will have a few tokens and keys in this class, so I'm going to send you a homework submission API key. You should just wash you students, obviously. You should get that email to me by the first class session. You'll get a you'll get an announcement in Canvas telling you all about that. You'll need to create a hugging face key and an open and I will give you an open AI key. It's just a sample one that you'll use for the one session that we deal with generative AI in this class. And then if you just wanna run uh, this program just to demonstrate, this shows you the current version. If you have a GPU, by the way, if you wanna use Apple Metal, so M1, M2 kind of stuff, everything in this course should be compatible with Apple Metal. And then we get to the first assignment. The first assignment is really pretty easy. All you have to do is put your key into it and run it. This is just to prove that you can actually execute Python code and that you can put the key in and run it. Module two, you'll get to do some actual coding. So this is everything. Uh, welcome to this semester. Uh, look forward to, to uh, working with all of you and seeing you on the first Zoom call. And thank you for watching this video. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, you'll get any updates that I do. I do this class, the other class, as well as a lot of projects that I find interesting using Gen AI, using Gen AI to generate the code, uh, as well as the things that humans still need to do for programming this stuff. So thank you for watching. If this is useful, you know, smash that like button. <laughs>